On today's 700 Club Canada, a powerful story of escape from the sex trade industry, and God answers the prayers of a young couple struggling to pay their bills. Welcome to 700 Club Canada. And today we're talking about being in God's hands. And I, I love that image because I don't know if you were a really little kid and you held your dad's hand and it was like yeah. so comforting, strength, everything you needed, right? Yeah, yeah. And well, I true. actually take my grandbaby's hands now and honestly, Bill, wait till that little baby boy of yours could just reach out and grab your hand. It's going to melt your heart. He already has. But, he already has. But you know what? It's true. Like whether it's our kids or us, like there's something about holding hands that is a trust Actually, in our image right here, Celebrate Partner Week, right? I like that. Yeah, it's about holding and together, really, all week we've been talking about how we can do this together with God's help and together as partnering together for His kingdom. Yeah, Holding hands together. I right. really like that image because yeah. there's so much strength in that. There's so much yeah. comfort in that. Yeah. There's so much assurance in that. Absolutely. And when we can really lean into this reality that God is with us, he's fighting for us, and that we are actually together. We belong yeah. with one another. And yeah. really, that is what Celebrating Partner Week is all about. It is. And we've had great stories all week. If you're just joining us today, welcome yeah. for our celebration. But it's really a big thank you week for all the people who've made this ministry possible and an invitation to come and join the family. Well, now, after years of struggle, this is how God gave uh, Penelope a much-needed breakthrough. Meet Penelope LaRosa, the entrepreneur behind Skinny's Instant Lifts. While Penelope runs a successful business today, there was a time when she struggled just to make ends meet. My goal was to have money for gas at that point. That was my big agenda. I worked, I had a good paying job, but I never had any money. I mean, it just kind of, it was like I had a, a pocket with a hole in it. And I was just continually in debt. She was $3,000 in the red when she decided to ask God for help. Who better to get counsel from than God? who has the solution to every problem that exists. I started listening to a tape series uh, called Believing You Receive, and it really taught the fundamentals about giving and receiving. Penelope started tithing and praying over her bills, believing that God would provide a way out of her debt. I had a legal right at that point to stand before God and say, I've done everything you asked me to do, now please do everything you told me you would. Shortly after, she had a conversation with a woman she'd recently met. And she was like, you know what? The Lord's just put it on my heart to pay off your debts. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Penelope kept tithing and was always able to pay her bills. Later, she met and married Nick. He owned and managed a number of rental properties and was a painting contractor with hopes of financial freedom. I've always wanted to be, you know, debt-free and be able to help folks. The couple agreed that putting God first would open the door to financial blessings. So by faith, they made tithing a priority in their marriage. They also gave above their tithe. When you're giving, it does something that uh, just defeats the enemy. It really, really does. And um, if you're giving, that's, uh, you know, showing your heart and what you do. The couple dreamed of buying a home in cash and providing a Christian education for their kids. At the time, they didn't earn enough for either of those things, but they continued tithing, giving, and seeking God. Meanwhile, Penelope wanted to see Nick retire from painting. That's when she prayed to God that something would change. Big financial breakthroughs followed. Nick was able to sell his rental properties at a profit, quit painting, and even invest in more rentals. Within two years from when we started believing God to pay cash for our house, we were able to pay cash for a house. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, that's just the Lord's doing. There's no getting around that. And as Penelope prayed that God would provide creative solutions to increase their income even more, she started getting ideas for inventions like Skinny's Instant Lifts. I've heard ladies on the phone crying, thanking her for the product that she invented. Skinny's landed the couple on Shark Tank, immediately increasing their sales by 400%. There's a general, you know, spiritual law there that you give, you know, and it'll be given unto you. 
As sales and income have continued to skyrocket, they've been able to put their kids through Christian school. And even with the COVID-19 pandemic, 2020 was their best year yet. If you're led by the Spirit of God and you're giving and tithing, that's where your home run comes from. That's when things start flowing and you start getting your breakthroughs. You do what you're supposed to do. God takes care of the rest. I love that. Giving is warfare. Nick said, giving defeats the enemy. And if you're giving, it actually shows your heart, doesn't it? I believe he's right. When you give, there is freedom from worry and fear and a need for control. It shifts your perspective from yourself actually to others. And it also makes you a better steward of what you have been given. I love the word stewardship. It is a really strong principle and a word in my life because it implies that we're not managers. We are, we are managers. We're not owners. We don't own the money or anything that God has given us. It's entrusted to us. And this has always been a freeing way to view my own finances. I don't own them. They belong to God. I'm simply accountable to manage them. Well, that's pretty freeing. And the enemy then cannot hold anything over on you. If, if you're not a partner, we really encourage you to come and join us. When you join, it's as simple as $20 a month, or maybe there's another giving level that best reflects what you're able to do. Pray and ask God what you should give. And when you join, you can choose Pledge Express, which allows the bank to take care of all of the processing. And as a thank you, you will receive two DVDs, The Nearness of Heaven, and This Week Only, we will send you a copy of the CBN story, which gives you the history and impact of this ministry of CBN worldwide, as well as in 700 Club Canada. So why don't you call us now, 1-855-759-0700. We'd love for you to be a part of our family. And now a special message from one of the ministries that you help support. On behalf of YSM, I would like to say a personal thank you. Because of your faithful giving, we've been able to continue to support community members in need with things like groceries, takeaway meals, and mental health supports. All of these things have contributed to their ability to overcome the challenges that they face as they struggle with the realities of living in poverty and seeking to overcome them. Thank you. My family and I often begin each day by watching the 700 Club Canada. Listening to people tell their own stories has had a tremendous positive effect on our own faith. Shelley, I love to give to the 700 Club Canada because I truly believe that God is using you. Mario, thank you so much for helping all of us with prayer. Shirley. As a survival sex worker, I lived a life of constant addiction, fearfulness, and hopelessness. I was constantly filled with the fear that the next client was going to murder me. My mom was a residential school survivor, and so that really deeply affected her life. She became a drug addict and alcoholic as a result of it. By age 21, she had me. I was removed from my mother's care because my mother went to federal prison for murder. And my grandmother took care of me for the first couple of years of my life. And then she couldn't take care of me because she got very sick, so my aunt took care of me. She became very physically abusive towards me. So then I was taken away by the RCMP and put into the white foster care system. The first home I was in, I was sexually abused, so I was moved on to other homes. And then eventually I got into another home where I had a very lovely foster mother who was a Caucasian Christian, and I lived with her for nine years. And so I grew up in a white home, I went to a white community, and I went to a white school. By the time they were done, I thought I was white. Jennifer became a survivor of what is now referred to as the 60s scoop. Throughout the 1960s, thousands of Indigenous children were removed from their families and placed in non-Indigenous homes. I had a lot of issues with my identity. I had trouble understanding being First Nations. Being around Native society, it, it was just alien to me. When I aged out of foster care, I went to go live with my First Nations aunt and uncle in Prince Rupert, British Columbia. So I was horrified to see all the domestic violence and addiction that was going on. I wasn't used to it. So I used to go to the nightclubs with my cousin a lot to get away from it. 
and I came across some men who invited my cousin and I to their house for a party. What I didn't realize is that they were out looking for women to pick up to introduce them to the sex trade. Jennifer was lured into prostitution as a teenager. Years later, she once again entered the sex trade for survival and ended up on the streets of Vancouver. It was very dangerous to work in the survival end of the sex trade because many times I was physically abused, I was beat up, I was robbed, I got raped once. Many women I worked with the streets with went missing and some are now, and they're now dead. I didn't like what I had to do. So when I was done my date, I would go do something, make myself feel good, so I'd go drinking. And alcohol numbed you and helped you for a while. And then I got introduced to crack cocaine. And I started doing that, and I was instantly addicted the first time I did it. And then crack cocaine took over my life and ran it. Then I went to work the streets to get my next fix, not to get money to pay the rent. So I felt total hopelessness. I felt powerlessness. I felt, I felt very angry, I was full of rage, I had a lot of hatred towards society because society didn't care if anything happened to me. And I didn't feel like I really had a future. Fearing for her life on the streets, Jennifer reached out to a sex worker organization that helped her move into a brothel to give her a measure of safety. I had just got into the brothel, into my room, and I was cleaning everything up, and I just turned on the TV, and I switched into the channels, and I came across a show called The 700 Club with Pat Robertson. And I started watching it. And then I saw these stories come on about how Jesus healed this person from their drug addiction, how this person, you know, got cleaned up of their criminal record, and I started to wonder, when was my turn? I got sick and tired of being addicted. I got sick and tired of poverty. I just got sick and tired of the lifestyle. I believed in God, but I didn't know how to obey him or to worship him. I had no mentors to show me how to be in a proper relationship with God. That's when I had enough. I went and saw another sex work organization. They came, they packed me up, moved me out, and moved me into a women's shelter. And a year later, I went into a recovery house with the Union Gospel Mission to get clean out of the sex trade and out of the drug trade. I believed for a long time, especially when I was in the survival sex trade, that Christians were judgmental people who didn't care about people like me. It changed after I came in contact with the Salvation Army and they started to treat me with a lot of love and dignity and they talked to me as, as a human being. And then the more Christians I got involved that started treating me like a human being, I started to change my attitude and how I saw them. I had already started going to Bible studies with the Salvation Army on a weekly basis. And so I was surrounded by many Christians. And I decided to start taking my faith serious with Jesus and so I contacted the Salvation Army to go to their Bible college to become a Salvation Army soldier. Since I've submitted to Jesus, my life has turned around dramatically. I've been clean for seven years. I've been sober for eight years. I've gone back to school, got my education to become a pastor. Today, my husband and I live out our faith through authentic Christian living, where we live in the, in the downtown east side, in the ghetto, with the people. We live in the SROs with them, and we do Bible studies with them, and we work with them, and we work within the community we live in. So we run something called Midnight Ministries, where we go in the back alleys and the streets, and we hand out food, and we provide crisis counseling, and we pray for people, and we also respond to drug overdoses. God's given me a lot of self-esteem that I can do things with my life. And, that, and that most of all, God lets me know if I hand my life over to Him, He can do amazing things with it. Before I came to Jesus, I didn't feel I belonged to anything. I was just wandering through life, trying to find happiness. And the hope I have in my life now is that I can actually have a life outside of drug addiction and prostitution, and then I can actually be happy. Before Christ, I didn't have an identity. I was whatever identity I was doing at the time. So if I was a survival sex trade worker, if I was a drug addict, that's who I was. And I believed that's who I was. And today as a Christian, I know my identity is in Christ. So I'm a child of the King. I'm created in His image. I'm a citizen of heaven.
And the biggest thing is that I actually believe it. As I was watching that story, I'm just reminded that so many people in our world have had their childhood robbed by the brokenness and the despair and the abuse that this world throws at us. And I want you to know that if you are a follower of Jesus, the promise comes with this real amazing truth that you become a child of God. You become a child of God. My grandson, Miles, has reminded me of the power of that. He has the best life. He's loved, he's fed, he's cared for. He has no concerns or worries. And that's what God wants for you too. All you have to do is ask. And we here at 700 Club Canada are committed to this amazing message. And so one of the ministries we partner with at the 700 Club Canada is Union Gospel Mission. The ministry that you saw of Union Gospel Mission is to help those who've lost their childhood, like Jennifer, in the story. And by partnering with us, you are a part of that restorative process of reminding people of who they really are, children of God. And if you're not a partner, we want to invite you to become one. Would you share with us in the joy of this message? And when you join, it's as simple as $20 a month or other giving levels like you see on the screen here. And when you join, you can choose Pledge Express, which allows the bank to take care of all the processing. And once again, as our thank you for partnering with us, we'll send you both the Nearness of Heaven and CBN's 60th Anniversary DVD. Don't wait. Be a part of what God is doing in restoring people's hearts and minds and lives. Call us at 1-855-759-0700 and partner with us today. Now up next, a couple struggling to pay the bills prayed for and received more than they needed. What does Jesus mean that the kingdom of heaven is within you or within your midst? The kingdom of God is at hand. That means you can literally reach up and grab it. His presence is right there with you. If you're saved, if you're a Christian, Jesus is dwelling in your heart. I think the Lord was preparing me, like you're about to enter a battle, but I am with you. He is the God that can make the impossible possible. In this life, please love God. Seek him first. He always knew where I was, and he was there with open arms. No matter what we go through, God is there to help us through. All these things will be added unto you. Jesus loves you. You can't even imagine what God has for you. The Nearness of Heaven, available now. Hi, I'm Maravik, and on behalf of Union Gospel Mission, I would like to personally thank you for partnering with 700 Club Canada. Because of our work together, we are able to reach thousands of men, women, families, and seniors who are struggling with homelessness, poverty, and addiction with the gospel. We're able to provide hot and nourishing meals daily, as well as Christmas hampers for families and individuals who otherwise would go without this Christmas season. Thank you so much for your partnership, and God bless. During their first year of marriage, Josh and Liz Lockman saved enough money to move from Indiana to Redding, California, where they enrolled in Bethel School of Ministry. But before long, they were running out of money. We went with a lot of faith that God would do great things, and it actually turned out to be very hard. I was stressed out about finances, like, most of the time. Josh kept trying to get jobs while we were in Redding, California and um, no jobs were coming. We really felt like if we didn't get financial provision, we'd have to go home down to less than $5 and starting to get behind on some of the bills. When there was income, Josh and Liz were always faithful to tithe, a discipline they both practiced since they were young. So it wasn't ever a question of, should we stop tithing? <laughs> no, we knew, like, you honor God first, and then um, he'll take care of everything else. With only a few dollars left and bills continuing to mount, they stayed up all night praying for a miracle. The next day in class, God answered their prayer when their teacher, Chris Vallotton, made an announcement. Anyone that is gonna go home if money doesn't come in, um, stand up. And so Josh and I, of course, we stood up. And then Chris Vallotton asked the other students to give money to the ones that needed it. 
and a bunch of students swarmed us. And then from then on, we had, you know, more miracles and just a consistent flow. Miracles just kept coming. I mean, it was a direct answer to prayer. So, and we got enough money to, to encourage us and to keep going. He definitely showed up. <laughs> Yeah. They finished the year of school and moved back to Indiana where Josh got a job in construction. Still, they live paycheck to paycheck. Frustrated, Josh turned to the Bible for answers. I'd get uh, verses on financial provision, write them on three by five cards and, and memorize them, meditate on them. I saw it was his will in his word to provide and bless his kids. And I started to have faith for that. So with new confidence, they once again turned to God for help when they needed an idea for a second income. And we both knelt down together by the bed and we asked God for a second income. I saw a picture in my mind of a honeybee and Josh saw a picture of a honey stick. Um, and we saw it separately and we'd never talked about beekeeping before. What God was speaking to me was that was honeybees would be a second income. They began keeping bees and selling honey. They then moved to the Atlanta area and Josh added bee removal services. Soon, the business was thriving. At the time, I had no idea what, what it would become. It was just almost started like a hobby more than a second income, but it grew it beyond my wildest expectations. So what happened is we tripled our income. So from what we had before. Josh and Liz believe their success stems from their commitment to trust God and tithe. One ministry they give to is CBN. We know in God's word that it says, give and it shall be given to you, pressed down, shaken together. And so for us, it, um, when we give to God and we look for good ground where we're like, that's a good ministry to give to, um, we know we're gonna reap a good harvest. And when we have access to his generosity and we can ask for anything, we end up becoming generous. And we end up seeing that we can never outgive God ever. As they look to the future, Josh and Liz believe God will continue to provide as they trust him with their lives and finances. I'm just confident that he'll, he'll provide and I don't have to worry. He says, seek first his kingdom and everything will be added unto you. And I found that to be very true. I was really struck in that story, Bill, of how they sought God first first and like so diligently i mean they're praying and fasting and then really to publicly in front of the student body say like we're struggling financially yeah. and even to ask for help like it's just beautiful how god responded to their yeah call i for help really i i agree i i think um i'm, I'm reminded of proverbs 21 5 where it says the plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty mm. and it's that idea that yeah, we can have a lot of ideas and often we consult the wrong things first, you know, right. get rich quick schemes, right. uh, you know, money advice from other people, and other sources. And really we need to go to God first yeah. because then he, I actually believe when we ask God, he gives us a plan and when we apply that, it actually changes. And so I believe in you. You can do this. Yeah. You may need to get some help. You may need to right. figure out how to ask God, but you can do this. Yes. And I do encourage you to ask God and listen to what God will tell you and pay attention to others around you because God uses people too. But thank you to those of you who have already partnered with this ministry. We are so mm -hmm. incredibly grateful. And, um, you know, this ministry really can't run without you. It's, it's completely donor supported, so thank you. Yeah, and so as we wrap up our partnership celebration week, uh, we wanna remind you that we need your help to get that message out today. So if you're already a partner with us, please consider increasing your giving level. If you are giving $20, why not consider $40? Your generosity is already making a difference, but when we give more, not only will be impacting lives, but you'll also know that from these stories that God blesses a joyful giver. That's right, and as a thank you, you'll receive the Nearness of Heaven DVD, which is really inspiring, um, as well as the CBN, story, I'll get them up right, the <laughs> CBN story, which actually is includes 700 Club Canada's story. So the history of this ministry, you'll find it really inspiring. Absolutely. Yeah. And we believe in you. With God's help, all things are possible. We'll be right back. Reaching Canada with the message of God's power and love. Proclaiming truth. I love to watch 700 Club Canada. It proclaims God's truth. Giving hope. Thank you for giving me hope every morning as I begin my day. Providing hope and encouragement. 
teaching segments, ministry, and prayer. Celebrating Redemption. Through your TV show, I was brought back to Jesus. Thank you. Life-changing testimonies. The testimonies you present are powerful. Touching the lives. May your ministry be blessed as you reach Canada for Jesus. It's the first time anyone from a TV ministry called to ask if I wanted prayer. Praying for viewers. Thank you for your prayer support. I really enjoy watching your program. Supporting the vision. A blessing to me and my family. I contribute to 700 Club Canada. Thank you for your faithfulness. Because of you, Canada is being reached with the gospel. Well, it's been a wonderful week and we've had some of our viewers and partners with us. And I want to welcome Dr. Wesley Mack. Dr. Mack, welcome to 700 Club Canada. <laughs> Great to have you with us. Yes. Thank you for joining us. And Dr. Mack, you sent a wonderful, encouraging comment I'm going to share with our viewers. Mm. Uh, we asked how long you partnered and you said since the beginning. So we won't <laughs> give you an age or, you know, how long that was. But thank you so much. And here is the words that you shared with us. Having the privilege of close association with 700 Club US and Canada from their inception, I applaud them on their years of consistent Christian ministry and community outreach, both here and around the world. There are few organizations that compare with the spiritual dynamic and social awareness that the leadership of the 700 Club brings to the table, both on the local and international level. I'm privileged to highly recommend the 700 Club on this Celebrate Partner event and to encourage viewers to strongly support its worthy objectives and initiatives. Thank you so much, Dr. Yes. Mack. Thank you for your friendship, for your partnership with this ministry. We're great. We really greatly appreciate you. And thank you for that insightful comment. And you know, as you, were, as you were reading that, Lori, I was just reminded that all of those comments, all the work that has been done throughout the years was really built on the faithfulness and the generosity of God's people yeah. who saw an opportunity, saw a need, yeah. and decided to invest in the kingdom of God. Yeah. And so that is the reality. Every good thing starts with people saying yes, yes. to God, I'm yours, and again, we could not do this without you, so thank you so much. And I'm more convinced than ever that in our nation, in our time and season that we're in, we need to invest in the kingdom of God yes. more than ever before. Um, so Luke 12, 24, here's a great verse for us. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn. Yet God feeds them, and how much more valuable you are than birds. Beautiful. That is true. God meets our needs, doesn't he, Dr. Mack? God meets our needs. Yes. Yeah, thank you, for, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your partnership. We are so grateful. We love you. Thank you. To contact us, visit 700club.ca.